Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the motor on the electric EO wheel 6.0 and specifically it was failing sooner than it should for a lot of people and I wanted to figure out how to improve the reliability so I spent a lot of time looking into it and with the electric EO wheel 6.1 I've, I've solved this issue and I wanted to make it available to 6.0 users so basically this is a circuit board for an electric EO wheel 6.1 and I plan to put these on my store. I'll be selling them at pretty much cost, so well, close to cost. And my goal is definitely not to make any money. I just wanna make uh, this available to people who have a 6.0 and uh, just uh, make their wheels more reliable. I mean, the vast majority of people have no problems and the motor keeps working. Uh, a small number, but much higher than it should be, have had a motor die, and then an even smaller portion of people have had more than one motor die. And I looked into why all the motors were failing, and basically the electronics in there were um, basically failing. And the reason the electronics were failing well, after a bunch of debugging was because there was some uneven uh, power issues there. So what I ended up doing is I added up this large capacitor and some diodes and a few other changes. I basically redid the entire circuit board for the 6.1 to solve this problem and improve a few other things. So uh, the plan is that I will be selling these and if you want to upgrade your 6.0 to have this new circuit board, you can, but there is one modification you're gonna need to make to the case and I'm gonna show you that in this video. Uh, it'll also change the behavior a little bit so right now, this switch can um, start and stop and change the direction. After this change, this switch will only change directions. It won't be able to start and stop it. So let's get into the actual change to the case since um, it's not too hard, but I wanna make it uh, aware to people. So let's just take off the bottom. And here's the circuit board. So I'm gonna take out the previous circuit board so you can see um, the issue with fitting the new circuit board. So you're just going to take out these three screws that are holding it in place. And then after those have been removed, Um, there's this little piece of tape here, and this is basically uh, preventing static buildup on the spindle. So I've already taken this one off. It came off very easily, but um, with a screwdriver, you can easily pry that off. And then the last thing to removing the circuit board is taking off this nut. And then after you do that, the circuit board comes out, and I find it easier once it's out to take out these three plugs. So there's the switch, the speed control dial, and then the plug going to the motor. And this plug, switch two, is unused on the, so this is the 6.0 circuit board. And you can see um, quite a few things have changed. Um, this side looks fairly similar, but uh, this side, a lot of other things have uh, moved around. There's a lot more components on this one, protecting it more from static and then there's this big capacitor. And the big issue and the reason you have to modify the case is this capacitor does not fit. So the problem is with the 6.0, there's this uh, plastic ridge right here, and you're gonna have to remove that. So to fit this in, if you sort of do this and then look under it, uh, basically you wanna remove most of this ridge here, and that will make this a little bit weaker, but Really, you don't even need this screw, um, but at the very least, you can, um, I, I mean, I'll still use it, but uh, it's not very important, and it's plenty strong even after removing this. I've done a little testing. Now, the best way to remove that is sort of what I'm gonna talk about right now. So let's see if we can make sure it's showing up well in video. So we need to remove that ridge. It's a little hard to get in there. Um, one option, is uh, just to use um, some kind of a knife and you just start whittling away at this plastic here and I'm not gonna do much of this because uh, I wanna make this video short but basically you wanna remove 
away enough to allow the capacitor to fit in there. And I haven't done this all myself yet with a, a knife, but I'm sure it's doable. And I bet you'd take like 15, 20 minutes or something. Um, but I think there's two easier methods. One of them is to use, uh, this is a Dremel. Uh, really any high speed rotary tool will work. Um, I tried a big disc like this, and this cuts very quickly, but it was hard to sort of fit in there. I think if you had a smaller disc, that would work. There's probably tools better than this one, but I did find uh, in my testing that a little round head at the end um, like this uh, does work, and I'll show you a little bit of how this works. So I'm just going to sort of cut, so I'm gonna cut a, a chunk out sort of about that size, but I'm only gonna cut half of this with this because I'm gonna show you another way to remove it um, in a little bit. But first we'll, I'll show you with the Dremel. So there, I did about half the cutting with that, and I'm, half the difficulty there was uh, making sure that I didn't get in the way of the camera too much. I, I don't know how good a job I did at that, but I was trying to stay out of the way. Um, you can definitely clean up some of the rough edges with this knife now, and um, it's about half cut out. Now, the other method that I wanna mention, I'll just set it here is using a torch. So if you use a torch like this, I, I didn't try, I mean, it has to get pretty hot. This is a glass reinforced nylon, so the melting point is pretty hot, but let me just sort of show you what I'm doing with the blade here. So, um, so this is just a random tool, metal tool that I had uh, along with a plastic handle so that it doesn't hurt my hands. And basically I'm just going to uh, light it, heat up the tool, so I'm just heating up the tool for a little bit. And that should be long enough. And then um, in here, this now sort of melts through the plastic quite easily. And like, it just cuts through the nylon pretty easily. And um, basically now I'm gonna heat it up again and kind of resituate the camera a little bit. But um, I find that this, um, if you heat it up two or three times, does quite a good job at removing this plastic. I'm just gonna kind of melt away little chunks like this. And I'm not actually sure if I like this or the Dremel. Um, basically, uh, whatever tool you have, I mean, there's a lot of hand tools out there as well that uh, you could be using for this. That, you know, I might, you know, if I didn't have a torch or a Dremel, I'd probably just go to the hardware store, pick up a few hand tools. Yeah, this is just kind of melting away and the plastic. I mean, you obviously want to be careful both with the Dremel to not cut yourself and a knife not to cut yourself and this hot uh, piece not to cut yourself, but um, yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get it perfect. You definitely don't need to get it perfect yourself either. So it's getting cool again, so I just have to heat it up. And I'm sure that there's uh, yeah, lots of other hand tools and things that'll work great uh, for removing this little thing, but 
I find that, you know, what I've shown here works and I'm sure people will find other things. So definitely share them in the comments if you have a, a solution to this that you really like. But at this point, we should be able to fit this new circuit board in. So let's test it out. So we just put it back in. You kind of have to get it in there a little bit sideways. It's a, it's a tight fit, but um, yeah. So now it fits. Um, the, the three screws all line up. You'd put this anti-static um, kit piece back on there. You'd take this nut, you'd put that back on here. This actually holds the whole thing in place. <laughs> You hardly even need those other three screws, but I recommend putting those other screws back on um, as well. Having a little trouble doing this on video, but um, so we've got the that in. Um, I'll put in the screws just so you can see how that goes. Oh, I realized I didn't put in the cables. You might want to plug the cables in before you screw it back together, but um, either way works. So I'll just plug them in after I've got it all screwed back together. Oops. And one more screw. this point uh, it's back in place you want to plug so this is the S and Z switch and this one says S and Z this one says on and off if you plug it into this one you'll be able to turn it on and off but you won't be able to control the direction so you definitely want to plug it into this one and this switch length is a little tight here this is where it might be a little better to do that before you do um, plug in the PCB, but it definitely works. Then the other ones um, are pretty easy fits. So this one will control the speed. So we plug this one into the speed switch or plug. And this one's for the motor. We plug that into the motor. And that's pretty much all there is to it. At this point, um, and I could put the flyer back on to sort of demo it to you, but you can plug it in. Like that. And now the behavior of this back light is different. It used to always turn off, but now it's going to always stay on. And you can um, use the speed dial. Well, you can switch the directions with this switch and you can use this to turn it on. So now it's spinning in the Z direction. And if I turn this, it'll switch directions. Uh, the ramping speed is also a little slower with this. Uh, to turn it off, you either have to use the foot switch or you have to use the speed dial. So uh, that's how you install the new electric eel wheel 6.1 circuit board into an electric eel wheel 6.0. One thing I did want to mention about the motors, since you might be looking at motors uh, when you're doing this, is that on the electric eel wheel 6.0, these arms flex out a little bit easier than they do on the 6.1s. Uh, and that means if you spin this flyer too fast, these arms can actually hit the case a little bit. It doesn't damage anything, but it makes a lot of noise. And um, so basically, this is the electric eel wheel uh, 6 0.1 motor and you'll see that it has this flat spot right there and you can put the set screw right on there and it'll work with the pulley that came with the 6.0 uh, so that's an option it'll speed it faster if your flyer arms hit you'll just have to remember not to go that speed 
I also plan to keep the 6.0 motor in stock, so you can also just get that. Uh, it won't go quite as fast, but um, this is the way you tell the difference. Uh, if, if it has this flat spot, it's a 6.1 motor, and if it doesn't, it ha it's a, a 6.0 motor. Uh, you can't use a 6.0 motor with the 6.1 just because uh, the pulley has a flat spot, so if you have a perfectly round uh, motor shaft, it's not going to fit. And I did that so it can't slip, and um, we have less issues with the um, motor pulley slipping, but uh, the set screw on the 6.0 will hold everything in place. Anyways, that is a quick overview of the motors, and uh, hopefully you see how to install an electric EO wheel 6.1 circuit board into an electric EO wheel 6.0. Thanks for watching.